you know, there's a lot of information and data when it comes to the cost of carbon emissions, when it comes to exposure to carcinogens, when it comes to exposure to diesel exhaust and particulates. And so I think just from a global standpoint, as well as a national and local, it really is what is our responsibility in the fire service as an industry. Uh, there's enough hazards that people have to expose themselves when it comes to the fire ground that we can't control. But when it comes to coming in and out of the station, driving down the road, getting to and from an incident, as well as backing into a station, that's our job uh, to keep them as safe as possible. So the, the primary goal is firefighter safety and health. And we, as every department around the nation and around the world understands, uh, we have taken a, a huge toll when it comes to firefighters exposed to occupational hazards that we have the ability to eliminate. Uh, but by the time we put it in service, our firefighters have to be comfortable. Uh, and again, it's about the trust to ensure that this vehicle or this apparatus is going to be dependable. And so there's so many thresholds and check marks along the way. And this was a two-year process. So we feel pretty good as far as having this as a frontline rig uh, that not only the firefighters can work off and depend on, but the community we serve uh, also can um, know that we'll be responsive and always there. What is important is that firefighters are able to work off these rigs and be able to you know, have, have the manufacturer collect the data in order to refine and improve uh, performance and technology. And so I think that's where, again, when you look at where we are in history and you look at us as an industry, who wants to be on the forefront in a partnership where you're working together to design the fire apparatus for the future?